Today we celebrate the baptism of our Lord Jesus in the River Jordan, the occasion when he was baptised by John the Baptist. And that was the turning point in his life. He left home, he left Nazareth, he began his ministry. The kingdom of God is close at hand and his ministry was to draw people to God. That was marked by his baptism, that beginning. And our baptism has the same effect. It's not a temporal beginning as it was in the life of Jesus, because most of us are baptised as children. But our baptism has the effect not only of bringing us into the family of God, but the purpose of it is to draw other people to Christ. As Pope Francis often says, if you look on the internet, there are loads of things that Pope Francis are meant to have said and never said at all. But one thing again and again is that being baptised means that you evangelise. Not proselytise. Proselytise means to bring everyone into your own way of thinking. To make them all Catholic, to make them all something particular that you like. Evangelise is simply drawing people to Christ. Jesus Baptism marked his ministry of drawing people to God. But because we're not quite sure how to do it, we tend to leave the evangelization of the thing to one side, and yet it is essential to our being baptized, absolutely essential, no doubt about it. But what might help a bit is at the beginning of the Gospel, when Jesus gets going, two elements, which are quite different, but complement each other. The message of John the Baptist and the message of Jesus himself. John the Baptist saw what was wrong and criticised it and wasn't afraid. He condemned sin. He recognised it and condemned it. He attacked Herod because of his immoral life. He attacked the Pharisees because of their hypocrisy, called them a brood of vipers. What an expression. John the Baptist could identify sin, sin and condemn it. But he couldn't take sin away. Jesus came to take away the sin of the world. Not suddenly, not suddenly wiping everything clean but gradually more and more in my own life and in your life Christ can get rid of any sinfulness if we want to. And the two characters, the character of Jesus, the character of John the Baptist, so different in many ways and yet complementing each other. Well, just look at the message they gave. John the Baptist, was a, he said the Messiah is going to cut down the a rotten tree that's not bearing fruit, sort out the chaff from the wheat, good from bad. When Jesus came and they asked him what, who he was, he quoted Isaiah, the lame walk, the blind see, the deaf hear, the poor have the gospel preached to them. I proclaim, proclaim the favour of the Lord. But we need the two, you know. We have to go on to the message of Christ, but perhaps to get there, we need to go with John the Baptist and understand. To see the evil of sin, to recognise it, and to want to get rid of it, but realising we can't and we need Christ to do it. This becomes more obvious if you've dealt with people who have a real addiction, alcohol or drugs. Alcoholics Anonymous have that pattern which is very shrewd. First of all, you have to admit that you have the addiction. 
if a person says, well, no, I, I drink, I enjoy it, but I could give it up any day. And if they have an addiction and can't admit it, it can't be healed. There's no way. You recognise what is wrong, first of all. And then you need to want to get rid of it. Do you really want to get rid of the sin or the addiction? Recognise it and get rid of it. Now that's John the Baptist. Recognising the sin, criticising it and saying, I really want to get rid of it. But then we need Christ to do it. As I say with Alcoholics Anonymous, to recognise it first of all, to want to get rid of it. And then admit that I can't do it on my own. I need the help of God. We need Christ. And so, one, one way you may have experienced this, often people will come to me and say, I've been deeply hurt. I've been really hurt by someone and I just can't forgive him. I want to forgive, but I can't. But then I push the question, do you really want to? Do you notice, in Jesus' life, when he healed anyone, he first of all asked if they wanted it. Him, when he met a blind man, a blind man looking for uh, uh, his pity, son of David, have pity, have mercy on us. And Jesus says, what do you want me to do for you? When he's blind, it's obvious. That, no, he, Jesus wants him to say it, that I may see again. Oh, one occasion, he met a man who was by a healing pool and had been coming there, I ask you, for 38 years. 38 years the man had been coming. And Jesus said to him, do you want to be cured? He needed to say it, to identify, yes, I want it. So when a person says, I want to forgive, or sometimes say, do you really want to? Some days I do and some days I jolly well don't. I hate the man, but I, I want to get rid of that hatred. Or I'd even take it further. Do you want really to want it? If you haven't got the stage of really wanting to forgive, but I, I want to get to that stage, I want to want it, that would be enough. But you need really to, to identify, first of all, the lack of forgiveness and then the wanting to forgive. And then accept that you can't do it. Often when people come like that, they know they can't. I want to forgive and I just can't. I need the help of Christ. And when you get to that stage, the healing will start coming. But not suddenly. He doesn't wipe away the sins of the world just like that. Real healing, deep healing, takes time. A sudden healing is superficial. But that needs patience and sometimes you feel you're almost getting there and sometimes you seem further away. But it takes time. A bit even like Jesus himself in the Garden of Gethsemane, the night that he, before he was arrested. His prayer starts off begging and praying not to be crucified. Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. If you asked Jesus at that moment, do you feel you accept it? I'm pretty sure he would say, I don't feel I do. We know he did, but he wouldn't feel it. In fact, might begin to wonder if he's going to give up before the end. Can I manage it? But the, as his prayer went on, more and more came to the, f f uh, the, the fore, I want to do the will of God. Your will be done. He didn't just tack that on the end. That became the dominant thing. And so in the end, when they came to arrest him, who do you want? Jesus of Nazareth, that's me. Take me, let the others go. He had accepted it, but it took time. 
Now that was just in a small, uh, in a few hours. But we need time to grow in it. But again, this pattern of John the Baptist mentality, we start with recognizing what we, is wrong, recognizing the need, wanting to go beyond it, and then asking Christ to do it. And that is how we need to look at this need of ours to be evangelists. If you are baptized, it is to evangelize, which means to draw people to Christ. But the first question is, do you want to? I mean that seriously now. Uh, no, never mind how you're going to do it, leave that. Do you want to draw people to Christ? Just think, do you want to? Hey, Jesus said to you, as he said to the blind man, what do you want me to do? And then perhaps say, I want to draw people to you, Lord Jesus. I want it. But also I recognise I can't. I don't know how to do it. I want to, but I can't. Well, don't let that hold you back. That is the next stage which takes us on to say, I need the power of Christ. I need the power of Christ to work through me. That pattern of prayer you need and you become an evangelist. What I mean is you will be drawing people to Christ, sometimes knowingly, sometimes quite unaware of it. And you may discover much later the effect and you may never until you go to the Lord. Recognising that as a baptised person you should be able to evangelise recognising that you can't and that you need the power of Christ and beg and pray for Christ to heal, not only heal, but to give you the strength and power to draw people to him. And that is a wonderful grace. And that will lead you to see the working of Christ in your life. I'll complete that with Celtic blessing I once learnt. Where the sun awakens the day, where the road winds on its way, where the fields are sweet with hay, may you see the Lord. Where the leaves are gently rustling, where the marketplace is bustling, where the rush hour crowds are jostling, may you see the Lord. Where the stars shine in the sky, where the streets so peaceful lie, where darkness now is nigh, may you see the Lord. And you will draw others to him. God bless you.